Want to patent your invention? The chance is near. You've given it heart. Now get it in gear. It's Passage to Profit with Richard and Elizabeth Gearhart. This is Richard Gearhart. And Elizabeth Gearhart. On Passage to Profit. Welcome. Passage to Profit is all about entrepreneurs and soon-to-be entrepreneurs. Elizabeth, do you think people listening are thinking, hey, I have some great ideas and I should figure out how to make money from them? I sure hope so. Well, listeners, you can. Stay tuned and listen to successful entrepreneurs tell you how. And I just want to say here, if they can do it, you can do it. Hey, we did it. If you don't act on your idea, you'll regret not trying. I know it takes courage. It's really hard to put yourself out there. It was hard for us. But the rewards have been more than worth it. In the end, you'll be so happy you did it. Yeah, it takes a lot of time and energy, but you'll be happy. Yeah, and we started on a shoestring from the ground zero, and now we have a thriving patent firm. And we get to have fun on the radio. Yeah. What a trip. For all the hard work this has taken, Richard, I wouldn't trade the journey for anything. No, it's been a great journey and so many benefits. I've had uh, more control over my life and my time and freedom, and I love what I do. So about these entrepreneurs, tell us a little more. Okay, well, there's an interview with a famous guest entrepreneur, and then after that, a pitch competition featuring three up-and-coming entrepreneurs. Our listeners can vote for their favorite pitch, and the best part is anyone can pitch, and you'll get a great feedback from our listeners and mega publicity. So how do you get on to pitch? Well, we hold pitch auditions in New York City, and if your pitch is right for us, you can go on the air. And it doesn't cost anything. It doesn't matter who you are or who you know. Go to our website, www.gearheartlaw.com, and find out how to come to a pitch audition. And let me explain how the contest works. After the pitches, you, our listeners, can Google Passage to Profit and find the page on gearheartlaw.com. Then vote for your favorite pitch. You can vote for a week, but you only get to vote once. So, get your friends to listen and vote. If they miss the show, which I hope they don't because it's always better live, right? But and they, is... are, they are your friends, too. They should <laughs> yeah. be listening, right? Exactly. There is a podcast you can find on iHeart. And just tell them to listen to the podcast and to vote for you because, of course, you're going to be the best one. And in the meantime, if they cannot remember what the name of the show or the podcast is, you can tell them to hold this visual in their head. Imagine you or themselves if they want to. Walking down a passage with a big pot of gold at the end. Passage to profit. Yes, and may your passage be short and your profit be huge. (laughs) Joining us after the break will be Andy Bruckman, who has had an incredible career as a comedy writer, performer, and entrepreneur. And we'll be talking with him about his latest projects. So you're listening to Passage to Profit on iHeartRadio, WOR 710, the voice of New York. There's never been a better time to start your own business. The opportunities are infinite and only limited by your imagination and enthusiasm. At Gearheart Law, we believe the most successful companies all have one thing in common. They start with a solid foundation first. Gearheart Law has years of experience protecting entrepreneurs, ideas, and brands using patent, trade, mark and copyright protection. So if you have a new consumer product, a new software application that you're planning to build or sell, or a brand or company name that you want to protect, contact the experts at www.gearheartlaw.com. Our professionals will create a custom strategy designed to fit your needs and your budget. All of our attorneys are passionate about protection, licensed and qualified to represent you before the United States Patent and Trademark Office. Don't start your project without calling us first. Visit Gearheart Law.com. Together, we can change the world. Visit G-E-A-R-H-A-R-T-L-A-W.com. This ad has been read by a non-attorney spokesperson. Now back to Passage to Profit. Once again, Richard and Elizabeth Gearhart. Our guest this week is Andy Bruckman, and his accomplishments are legend. Andy is a professional writer, uh, notably the creator and executive producer of the Emmy Award-winning series Monk. He has also written screenplays for the movies, including Sergeant Bilko, starring Steve Martin and Rat Race, directed by Jerry Zucker. He also wrote for Saturday Night Live and David Letterman and is recently producing the TV series the Good Cop, coming out in September. September in September, third week of September. Yeah, congratulations on that. Well, that might be premature. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll talk well, again. Well, it, we'll talk again in October. The word good is in the title, right? Yeah. So it has to be good, right? Well, yeah. Okay. You mean I'm contractually obligated <laughs> to deliver a good show. Of course. And uh, besides his writing and producing, he's also a personality, right? A radio personality. You've been hosting Seven Second Delay since 1992. 
So for the benefit of our listeners, what does seven-second delay actually stand for? Uh, seven-second delay is a radio term. Some shows, I think some TV shows now actually do it. They claim to be live, but they actually are going out on a seven-second delay, so they have a little chance. They have seven seconds right. to uh, delete uh, and, and bleep out any curse words. And so what motivated you to name the show after this technical feature are it's was there a, a lot of concern about what might be coming nobody, across nobody's ever asked me that and <laughs> i have i have a couple of companies including a toy company which we'll talk about and i have this radio show and i don't like the names of any of them right. i regret <laughs> i named them and at for a minute i was happy with them and i almost instantly regretted it i wish i had that to do over that naming that show it doesn't apply to my show it doesn't mean anything and i i don't know why i thought it was clever uh, no one's ever asked me that but it's true i and the name of my toy company i also regret because <laughs> well if you want to hear i do the name of the toy company is um, as you know uncle andy toys right okay so but when you spell it out when you clump it together like for a gmail address it looks like it says unclean uh, Mandy, toys, so and, some and, so, and also people don't know. There. People don't know if it's people don't know if it's plural or not. They don't know if it's Uncle Andy's well, or Uncle Andy. I, so I, it's actually a lesson. There's a, if there's this could be your first lesson of your show. Okay. Yep. For entrepreneurs man, everywhere. Man, just hit, yeah. Just hit pause when you think you have a good name and write it out and take a good look at it. Well, uh, you've been pretty adventurous in naming some of your toys here too. By the way, I had to send an email to the management of the radio station to see if I could use some of the names that you have oh, well, for your toys. Well, I think you know which one I'm talking about. Well, of course, about. there's a... There's and a, that, I, I was totally flattened on that. They said, no way can you no, say I don't, that I on don't, here. I don't blame them. Um, uh, there's a party... You know, as you, as you and your listeners may know, the trend in party games now is to be a little, a little uh, uh, edgy and a little subversive. And, uh, and I, yeah, I have a card game on the market... It's actually doing very well, and it's called. Oh, I can't even say it. I guess. But well, you can say bleep. I I'll was say, told bleep, you, you bleep, can say bleep. Bleep happens. Right. And, and it's it's in Walmart, and they insisted on changing the name uh, to Stuff Happens. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. So it's on the shelf in Walmart. But That's too but, bad for Walmart. Even? Well, well I'll, I'll, yeah, it is. But as you and and other entrepreneurs listening, especially in the toy, especially in in, in my end of things, the, the toy market, getting into Walmart is is a it's big huge. deal. It's, yeah, it's yeah, the major yeah. league. So how did that so, happen? How did well, you do well, that? Well, there was a it was licensed to a toy company that that did it. But uh, and, you know, they called and said, "Would you mind if we if we uh, caved in a little and changed the name of the of the game?" To get it on the shelf in Walmart, and my and I immediately said, "No, I don't mind at all. Are you kidding? I'll you know I'll compromise my principles in a second, yeah, to, because Walmart is is a big deal for uh, I don't not just toys, I guess, but for for almost you know almost in any, yeah, almost any field. That's huge. I mean, they're countrywide. Boy, everybody goes Christmas shopping there, whatever. Uh, but I have a question for you. You were in another industry, and you still are, actually, because you've got this new TV show coming out. But you just went cold into the toy industry, from what I understand, and decided you were going to make and sell toys. I, I've heard that's really hard to do. So how did you get started in that, and why, and like, how did you get so successful at it? Well, I, 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 I hope I can get more successful. I don't, you know, I'm just, I feel like I'm still uh, near the starting gate. But, um, you know, I... I I've been writing uh, for television and film since I was in my 20s and had a, uh, you know, pretty, a, a, a very uh, solid, solid career, you know, not a household name or anything, but I, I made a living and supported my family for, for decades. And then after Monk ended, Monk uh, was my, uh, my series, my TV series that had a nine year run on, on the USA network. When that ended, I kind of, I just felt burnt out and was ready. I didn't want to retire. I had all this energy and creative energy, but I, I, I didn't, I, did, I, I felt I couldn't write again, you know, at least for a while I needed to, you know, I guess farmers call it when their fields are fallow, you know, I just had to, <laughs> I had to do something else. And, uh, so I was in my, uh, I was in my mid fifties and I, uh, I've al I always wanted to, uh, create a product and and develop it and and go through that process and bring it to market. I've always kind of admired people that do that. I also always admired people 
that pivot that that can pivot you know maybe late in their life or at the end of one career or mid career and just try something new i always think that's fantastic you only get one life and you want to you know you should live it to the fullest and uh, you know people like al franken for example i knew as a comedy writer and and then I, you know i woke up one day and he's in the us senate and just, you know i just admire people like that and uh, and so i uh, from scratch you're absolutely right i i didn't know anyone uh, and I, I didn't even know where to begin, and I uh, decided to start a toy company. And it really started actually with you and Richard. Uh, when I patented my first idea at your firm, it was like a drug. It was so exciting to me. Uh, it re- you should actually have a warning label on those patents because because you patent They're something. They're addictive, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they are addictive. You patent one thing, and you and it just goes to your head. You're so proud because it's proof that you had an original idea, and it's out in the world now, and it's your baby. So after that first patent, uh, yeah, I was I was really hooked. And uh, and I started doing uh, toys, and I have sort of segued recently into into more games. But that's what I've been doing the last five or six years. Yes, well, I've had the pleasure to see at least one of your games in the firm that you were patenting. And I, I must admit it's a little irreverent, but it is absolutely hilarious. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah, well, I, I think your stuff which... is great. Oh, good. Okay. The bingo. Oh, yeah, travel. Oh, travel real, bingo. Travel that is bingo. Travel bingo is now licensed to uh, a company in uh, called Breaking Games. There's a game out called Who Tooted, well, <laughs> which is kind of which combines the thrills of uh, of flatulence and and poker. <laughs> which finally together in one game and, and that's that was a, that's a family game by the way usually, it is a, it's for kids you, com- you combine those two usually for like seniors who yeah. are playing poker I right probably love it too. or the dogs, playing poker. the dogs playing poker but that actually that was a, that that game i did patent with you with it with you and yeah. uh, and sold it to um uh, goliath uh, games out of uh they're out of uh well it's an international company but they're ba- they're u.s uh uh arm is based in Texas. So I think people would love to be able to create a toy and sell it to another company that's really going to market it and get it into Walmart. So did you know anybody at these companies? You know, I had a couple of contacts that that were like second and third hand. I didn't know anyone at the companies, but I, um, you know, I had friends that had, uh, that, that knew people on the manufacturing end and they recommended an agent. There's actually a guy that lives in uh, New Jersey. He's an ex, uh, toy company executive, creative executive. Now he's representing uh, designers and inventors. So I agreed to work with him. You know, he takes a commission, of course, uh, from every sale. But I had an agent then that sort of could hold my hand and guide me. And it took me a while to find my way. And my first pitches, you know, you pitch. uh, One thing that was interesting to me, I don't know if it's interesting to anyone else, (laughs) but, um, uh, you know, I I spent uh, years and years uh, trying to sell and pitch movie and TV ideas. And what I learned was that the toy business is very similar in many ways uh, mm-hmm. to TV, to pitching uh, 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 TV and movies. You're, you're, you go in with an agent, you sit with the toy company execs uh, across a conference room table, you small talk and schmooze, how's your family, where do you live, tell me about your dogs, you know, and, uh, and then you get into uh, selling your wares. And selling your wares, of course, means it within the toy and game business you actually put the toy and game or prototype on the table and play you play a game and that's the uh, pitch session so you're not telling a story like you would do in hollywood but other than that it's it's very similar the other the other difference is in hollywood they really do all they really care about is what you did last and uh, how hot you are and and how much money your last project made but in uh, i'm finding in the toy and game business that doesn't factor in at all if they like your game uh they don't care who you are or where what rock you crawled out from and you'll be back in just a minute you're listening to passage to profit on wor on your am dial what are entrepreneurs most valuable assets their passion and ideas we can't protect your passion but we can protect your ideas trust gearheart law to protect your ideas with premier patent trademark and copyright services there's never been a better time to start your own business contact us at gearheart law Com. At Gearheart Law, we have years of experience protecting entrepreneurs' ideas and brands using patent, trademark, and copyright protection. So if you have a new consumer product, a new software application that you're planning to build or sell, or a brand or company name that you want to protect, contact the experts at Gearheart Law. www.gearheartlaw.com. Don't let the wrong protection strategy ruin your business. All of our attorneys are passionate about protection and are licensed and qualified to represent you before 
before the United States Patent and Trademark Office. Don't start your project without calling us first. Contact Gearheart Law on the web at G-E-A-R-H-A-R-T-L-A-W dot com. Together, we can change the world. This ad has been read by a non-attorney spokesperson. It's Passage to Profit. With Richard and Elizabeth Gearhart, our special guest tonight is Andy Breckman. Andy, what kinds of advice can you give entrepreneurs who are going to be giving pitches? I mean, we have some here in the studio with us today, but uh, what kinds of tactics, approaches were successful for you? One thing about pitching that's always bothered me, it's true in Hollywood and it's true in, that you don't ever hear other people pitches. You don't get to say, hey, could I hang out in the corner and listen to your next <laughs> sales, <laughs> next sales pitch come in? Because So you sort of only know how you do it, uh, which is a little bit of a disadvantage. But I find it's true in Hollywood and, and it's true in uh, the toy and game business that if you're if you're passionate, you know, if you really if you really are passionate, it comes through. And my advice would be let them know how excited you are about the product. And I would also really think about who you're pitching to and what niche they're looking to fill and and just kind of tailor your pitch to that. You know, some game companies are looking for experiences that kids could have. And some game companies are looking for board games. And, and so you emphasize different aspects of your product. So when you went into pitch, you and your agent, you felt between the two of you, you were usually pretty well prepared or at least had a little bit of background on the company you were visiting or? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Although, you know, when you go to the trade shows like, uh, of course, Toy Fair in, in New York, you are pitching eight or nine times a day to different companies. And some you've heard of and are familiar with Mattel, of course, and and Hasbro. These are the heavy hitters and Spin Master. There, there are a few major league teams you know out there but then others are companies you've never heard of and so you 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 don't often have time to do a lot of research but you kind of get a sense when you enter a, a showroom you know what they're looking for because you see the products they've they've put out and uh, and you can tell your pitch I mean sometimes I've I've go in with four or five games and I look around a showroom and I realize game number three would not be appropriate for this company and I just kind of put that back in my pocket. Right. And and don't buy, don't waste their time or or my time with it. That's so you call, call an audible. So can I ask, what do you think the market is now for non electronic games? I mean, everything is online. Game used to be called Game Boys. I don't know, like downloadable apps, whatever. Now, but just to sit and play checkers or a game where people look at each other and interact without their devices. Well, it's actually huge. It's actually just booming off the off the charts, and I think it's because people maybe are, are, have hit the wall on, on sitting alone and looking at screens and, and not interacting with the community or, or their friends. And uh, board games and party games are, uh, are huge. If you walk into a Target or, or, uh, or Walmart or any comic book store, there's always, there's always shelves now dedicated to, uh, to party games and board games. So at least that part of it is, is huge. I think... Um, I think uh, there are other types of games that are being phased out. It seems to me, uh, you know, board games for board games for like ten and eleven and twelve year olds. They seem to be pr- kind of bored with, no pun intended, bored with those games. <laughs> um, I actually tried uh, at early in my uh, to- in my uh, Uncle Andy toys uh, when I first started. I tried to develop apps, and I actually patented one. And that, uh, to be honest, was just a rabbit hole. I just didn't have the technical experience yeah. and, uh, and or the know-how, and that that can really eat up your kids' college funds. Uh, I have, you know, my kids, my kids aren't going to be going to school because of this failed, stupid what? idea Daddy had. But it really, it really eats up so much money because you need, at least I do, you need, you know, uh, you need uh, to hire, find and hire uh, designers and and programmers and. And you're competing with people with uh, really deep pockets, you know, out mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. And I just, at least speaking for myself, I couldn't find a way to get traction on the apps. So speaking of canines, can we bring up uh, Canine Commando, your, yeah, your, just, your, your, your latest project with Well, like, us? we can. Well, you know, actually, Richard, I'll, I'll defer to you. Can we? Yeah, we can. <laughs> we can. I mean, it's it's, been, the patent has been filed. The patent's been filed. Yeah, two weeks ago, I would have been, I would have hesitated. You would have, it would have been a, a, a terrible question. Well, but. the idea, yeah, well, yeah, the idea, <laughs> the idea that uh, I have a partner, uh, Will Sacron, who uh, is, you know, he's putting it together. He's a mechanical genius. And programmer too, but um, 
we're trying to break into the <laughs> super soaker market. The water pistol super soaker market is a billion dollar market. Hasbro has uh, dominates it with their super soaker uh, trade uh, a line. But we were tr- we're trying to figure a way to shoehorn into that. And the idea that we came up with is uh, we have a super soaker. It's a big water pistol. It's um, it's remote controlled. You can control it from a, a distance, <laughs> and it's strapped by on a harness, and the harness is strapped onto your dog. <laughs> And your dog runs around the neighborhood <laughs> just shooting water at, at unsuspecting neighbors and mailmen and your sister. I, I just want to. In po- a perfect world, your neighbor has a uh, canine commando. And, they, and so two dogs are fighting it out. And, uh, it's like two lawyers in the same town, right? Yeah, exactly. Two lawyers in the same town. And by the way, no dogs were hurt in the filing of yeah, the patent. That's so. right. Well, we're looking forward to, you know, uh, we're getting a prototype made actually next week and we'll make a. A video, uh, a video of it, and we'll see what happens. I, you know, I, I'm excited by it. Like, like all of my ideas, I'm really excited by it. I can't wait to, <laughs> can't wait to see it, and can't wait to see a working prototype. But of course, no one bats a thousand, and I've been batting maybe two hundred. You know, I want maybe one in five yeah. things fly, which is perfectly respectable. It's perfectly fine, and uh, you're never going to hit the uh, the ball out of the park every every time. But it's it's so much fun doing it. Well, Andy, uh, what last piece of advice would you give to uh, anybody who wants to start a business and go for it big like you did? I can only speak for myself, of course. I, but, but I would say it's, it's one of the best decisions I ever made. I've, it's been so satisfying for me. You know, my creative juices are flowing. I love being uh, my own boss. I still have a day job. You know, I'm still writing for TV and film, but I can't wait for uh, those jobs to end. You know, when I take a break between jobs I, so I can get to my own company again and call the shots and and be my own boss and uh, and I don't regret any of it. No, that sounds thanks, great. Andy. That was fantastic. Sure, my pleasure. Yeah, thanks so much, Andy. You'll be back in just a minute to help us judge the pitch contest. You're listening to Passage to Profit on W O R on your AM dial. There's never been a better time to start your own business. The opportunities are infinite and only limited by your imagination and enthusiasm. At Gearheart Law, we believe the most successful companies all have one thing in common: they start with a solid foundation first. Gearheart Law has years of experience. Experience protecting entrepreneurs, ideas, and brands using patent, trademark, and copyright protection. So if you have a new consumer product, a new software application that you're planning to build or sell, or a brand or company name that you want to protect, contact the experts at www.gearheartlaw.com. Our professionals will create a custom strategy designed to fit your needs and your budget. All of our attorneys are passionate about protection, licensed, and qualified to represent you before the United States Patent and Trademark office. Don't start your project without calling us first. Visit GearHeartLaw.com. Together, we can change the world. Visit G-E-A-R-H-A-R-T-L-A-W.com. This ad has been read by a non-attorney spokesperson. It's Passage to Profit. With Richard and Elizabeth Gearhart, our special guest tonight is Andy Breckman. We're going to be going to the contest segment of our program. Each contestant will have a total of eight minutes to make their pitch. The first two minutes, they fly solo, and for that time, describe their project and put it in the best light. The remaining time is for the Inquisition, where they'll be challenged by Richard, Elizabeth, and Andy to describe their project in greater detail and convince the audience their project is the best. At the end of the program, you, our listeners, will be directed to the Passage to Profit page on the Gearheart Law website, where our listeners can vote for the pitch they like best. So turning things over to you, Elizabeth, please introduce our first contestant. Well, I am very happy to have the toy tamer, Evelyn Cucciara here, and she is going to talk to you about her incredible method. Hey, everybody. As Elizabeth said, I am Evelyn Cucciara, the toy tamer. I come into people's homes and put in the right structure and system so the children are actually in charge of cleaning up. Now, a clean, neat playroom is kind of like the icing on the cake, but the real reason I do this is to empower the children. We tend to be in a time right now where we are raising children who cannot do anything because we do everything for them. So as a result, as they get older and older, we're doing more and more and more for them. However, if we kind of switch that around and put it so that their clean playroom is on their responsibility list, 
then they become in charge of their own world. Now, no matter how many times you ask them or yell at them, they're not going to do it. So the way my system works, it works off of um, behavior modification and instant gratification, making cleaning up the playroom into a big game. So what kind of happens is that instead of the children not wanting to clean up, they're like, oh my gosh, we get to play a game, let's do it. They take charge, less meltdowns, less temper tantrums, and there's peace in the playroom once again. Perfect. Okay. Well, I have one comment I want to make. So I've heard this pitch before, but I do want to say one thing I love about this is it teaches kids skills that can carry throughout their life. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Executive functioning skills. An organized child produces an organized adult. And when children are surrounded by chaos, clutter, things like that, they think that way. But when they're surrounded by organization, in my world, bins, cubbies, that sort of a thing, they can then compartmentalize their thinking as they get older. Sports is in one part of their brain, homework in another part of their brain, and so on. I have young kids. I, I absolutely agree with you. I have young kids, and we... Uh, beg them and, and have to and often have to dangle rewards in front of them to get yeah. them to clean the room and they're so reluctant to do it but once they do it they're so proud of themselves mm -hmm. and they love their then they spend more time in their room and uh, mm -hmm. and enjoy the space a lot more uh, and it's I think it's great can you tell us uh, or tell me I don't know if uh, if Rachel and Elizabeth know but like uh, physically what what are you uh, marketing what are, what exactly are you are you selling physically what I do is I'm selling a service oh so it's a I, service exactly so I go into people's homes and put in inexpensive structures that hold toys that can then grow with the children. So there's no giraffes or elephants on them. So the furniture that I put in can go through your teenager. They can take it when they move out of your house, finally. Do you, do you supply the furniture? Yes, I do absolutely everything. We show up with everything. We do the entire playroom in one day and leave by dinner time, and your child is then set for life because we also do new labels for the rest of their life. What is the process? Do you come in and meet the family mm -hmm. and look at the yes. space, and then you and then you leave and design a custom-made? Exactly. Oh, wow. Oh, yep. fantastic. It's all specifically for what that child's interests are. Do they need an art area? Do they need a dress-up area? Do they need Lego storage up high because their little brother or sister is going to destroy all their Lego when they're at school? My background comes from child psychology as well as um, art education. So I tend to speak child, so I understand what their fears are and understand what they're concerned with in their playroom, what they need to have fun. For an example, most kids have playrooms that have a dress-up area, but very few have a mirror. So if they don't have a mirror, how do they know right. what they look like? Right. That's a good point. So... Just so I understand it, the method revolves around particular pieces of furniture. And they're, they're not really custom made, but they're sort of available from, uh, there's a variety of pieces. And what's special about the furniture that helps support this method? It's, it's kind of generic furniture, so it's going to grow with the child forever. But I also specify the right size shelving with the right size bins and the right labels in the right places. So what I like to do is called the SANE method of organizing. It's something that I invented. S stands for sort, get rid of the things they've outgrown or are broken. A stands for arrange, you need the right shelving and the right bins. N stands for name, you need the right labels in the right place. And E stands for everyone, which means you need a, some sort of a catalyst to start off the cleanup process. For me, it's a bell that puts the child in charge of the entire system. That sounds great. And how, I mean, how long does it take to see a change from uh, the initial messy room to the clean, consistently clean room? Well, depending on how you're asking that question, we do it all in one day. So we get there in the morning. By the time we leave, it's done. The children take over from that point. It will never be messy again after we leave. Wow. Wow. Now, there's only one of you? There's me and my husband. Okay. You and your husband. Oh, yes. great. I love that. There's me and my but, husband. But, yes, to answer your question, what my goal is in life is to take this, make it something that I can market to sell to other home entrepreneurs who want, or entrepreneurs who want to start a home-based business to go out and help other families. I do this because I love helping children, and that is the reason. And I do this. I want to empower them to take over their own lives. Yeah, I see this in, in some uh, preschools. So, you know, some of their areas. Some of them are really well designed, and mm -hmm. others not so Correct. much. But uh, but yeah, you can always you always appreciate a well designed preschool uh, classroom mm -hmm. uh, because it has uh, every, there's a place for everything. Are you doing more um, bedrooms? Or are you doing more playrooms? Mostly playrooms, though. I do some bedrooms that are a combination bedroom and playroom, but mostly playrooms. So you're you're basically Mary Poppins. Pretty much, yeah, <laughs> yeah <I mean. laughs> exactly. And she makes, wait, she makes, what was her song she made? Spoonful of sugar. Spoonful of sugar. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And it's so funny because I'm really the only person who does this. I mean, I have like a, I wouldn't say I have an organizing background. I have, I like to invent systems and habits to make my life easier. So that's where this came from. I used to run a family daycare many years ago and I didn't want to spend an hour putting toys away at the end. So I came up with a system. Oh, that's great. I, can you can you create a system for adults, too? I'm yeah, exactly. I, I can, can <laughs> but I don't like to because with adults, everybody's got baggage, and you don't want to get rid of things. Children are not tied to many things.
things. Once they've outgrown it, they're done with it. So mm-hmm. they're happy to let things go. Right. But, I, th- I think one thing I really like about you, too, is I really feel like you go in with the non-judgment zone. Oh, completely. You know totally business. Completely. I don't care if like you look like a hoarder lives here. I'm not going to judge you. Right? Well, I get excited when I see a really messy playroom because I can already <laughs> see exactly how it could be and how it can completely change that family's life and more important, that child's life. So do you allow the children to sort of decide kind of where they're going to be putting their things? Do they have a a role in deciding what storage spot their teddy bear is going to go into? Or do you kind of create more of a structure for them? I create a structure so that like things are stored with like, like building uh, building toys are all stored in the same sort of area. Art stores supplies are all stored in another area. Dress up things are all in another area because then it makes sense when it's time to put it away. I mean, there are labels hanging also. But when like is stored with like, it's easier to put it away. That sounds good. I'm learning a lot. I'm thinking about all the things that I could do to improve my oh, man. We, my, we, my, we my office, my everything. We, you know, so I know, our, I'm our feeling house, inspired. Yeah, no, we, we desperately need it as well. And what's, what's great is, it's just, it, like you said in your introduction, it's a lifelong habit. Yes. People, the, they start putting things away and they will... And hopefully that'll carry through to uh, to the rest of their lives. So what is the youngest age that you start with? Usually age two. Wow. And yeah. they, they learn? They, oh, of like, course, because it's a picture of their actual toy. It's not a generic picture of a train taken off, you know, the Internet. It's their actual toy. They're smart. Two-year-olds are very smart. Give them a chance. <laughs> I think, oh, that's brilliant. So there's a picture on the on the shelf. Mm-hmm. Of the, of the train, and that's where the train should go. Exactly. When they're Instant gratification. Playing. When the bell rings, they match it up. Oh, that's awesome. great. This is Evelyn Cucciara. Do you have a website that you I can... I do. It's very simple. It's thetoytamer.com. So go to thetoytamer.com, and you work in the New York, New Jersey... Mm -hmm, Tri-state area over here. Okay. I can do it online also. I can give you the the how to do it yourself, but give you the plan. That's fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Evelyn. You are listening to WOR 710 AM Radio on iHeart with Richard and Elizabeth Gearhart, Passage to Profit. Hi, I'm Lisa Askley's the Inventress founder, CEO, and president of Inventing A to Z. I've been inventing products for over 38 years, hundreds of products later and dozens of patents. I help people develop products and put them on the market from concept to fruition. I bring them to some of the top shopping networks in the world, QVC, HSN, Evine Live, and retail stores. Have you ever said to yourself, someone should invent that thing? Well, I say, why not make it you? If you want to know how to develop a product from concept to fruition the right way, contact me, Lisa Askeles, the inventress. Go to inventingatoz.com, inventingatoz.com. Email me, lisa at inventingatoz.com. Treat yourself to a day chock full of networking, education, music, shopping, and fun. Go to my website, inventingatoz.com. Passage to Profit continues with Richard and Elizabeth Gearhart. With Andy Breckman on WOR. I'm here with our second pitch, uh, Linda Zimba from Aero Defense. And you have two minutes. Go. Thank you, Richard. Um, well, I'm very happy to be here. Um, Elizabeth told me that I should just give my investor pitch. So that'd be simple. Problem is, I don't have one. I've raised funding the old fashioned way, I've sold some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I found it. Entrepreneur. Yeah. <laughs> I founded Aero Defense in late 2015. It's a passive RF drone detection system. And what makes us different is we locate both the drone and the pilot. That's the unique part there. Uh, we're a legal RF system. Uh, turns out a lot of RF systems, if not most on the market, violate federal wiretapping laws. And uh, the system works. We've been proven in high traffic urban areas as well as the desert area. Elizabeth asked me why and how I formed this company. I saw drones interfering with firefighters in California in 2015, crash land on Angela Merkel and um, crash at the U.S. Tennis Open. And I looked at the market at that time and the solutions were traditional like cameras and acoustic and radar and they ranged from fairly ineffective um, up to too expensive and military and complicated. So my background is in internet security. I said, There should be a simple way to do this. It needs to be automatic. And the original proof of concept was like internet security to keep the bad things out. Um, 
that's when we realized how many laws we were violating. So, um, Andy, we pivoted. P- you pivoted. Pivoted to become a legal company. So if, if I had been playing with other people's money, I probably would have bet that the laws will change and I would uh, be first to market and I would get big fast. Because I was paying for it out of my own pocket, I was a little concerned that the illegal system would be a barrier to the sales cycle Mm -hmm. and that um, the FAA, FCC, and Department of Justice might not make a decision and change the regulations in time before I ran out of money. So we're having success. We're selling to stadiums. We're about to close in the New York metro area. Um, Our system is the only one out of three or four that were tested that located the drone and the pilot. We are working with a partner to uh, target the correctional industry. We have pilots in two prisons in two different states, and we have two production systems going in um, and in a third state. Because I, I self-funded because I wanted to, because I wanted to focus on the customers, the product, and the community. I wanted a small number of customers and refine the solution so that I could really nail it for them, and they would become great references. Then I could scale the business. So nail it and scale it. That's a great book. I recommend um, entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs to read. Because I self-funded also, I was able to focus on the community. Uh, For example, I've been a participant in the Cape May County UAS Innovation Group run by Carol Matisic, where I learn, I help, I inspire, I've been inspired. I attribute a great deal of success to them. And uh, also even just my website is in, in .tech. Uh, the startup league. So that's good. But the most important thing is team. We work with smart people, nice people. They're passionate about it. They work hard. There have been some folks that are working and just doing it for no pay because they're so passionate about it. So that's been my passage so far to profit. Oh, that's that's great, Linda. Thank you very much. So RF, what is RF for our listeners who um, don't know what RF is? Right. It's radio frequency. That's like the channel that the drones and the controllers communicate on. Right. So, and oh. so your technology allows you to pinpoint uh, drone pilots. Is that <laughs> essentially? I love that. <laughs> I love yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. So it's like one of these, you know, freaky movies like um, I'm trying to, uh, you know, where they're flying around with the satellites and they see you from this big sky map and all of these electronic circles and stuff. And then you, you find that person and then you tattle on them. Is that basically it? That's pretty much it. We'll send a text or an email to the proper authorities or we've got a command console and, you know, big alarm goes off, you know, it sounds like an air raid siren. Um, and we've got it integrated with Google Maps, so you can like zoom into Earth View, and you can like see the path where the drone's been and where the pilot is. Wow, well, pretty cool. You, you don't interfere with the drone; you're just identifying the drone and the pilot. Well, you're not it, bringing it down. Not anymore. Oh. Our, <laughs> That's how it started. Our, actually, actually, right? our first proof of concept was we would disrupt it or take it over, and right. and if they change the laws, we can wow. reincorporate that. Right. Uh, or if the federal government comes knocking on the door and gives me a big pot of money, then I could wow spend development cycle on that. But I can't develop it on spec. I hope, I hope they do. That would be great because I know a lot of these a lot of these drones pose a real threat. What exactly uh, physically are you marketing? What is your what mm-hmm. does your invention look like? It's a box. It's a weatherproof outdoor box. It's um, permanently mounted. Um, it's about sixteen inches by eighteen by twelve, and then you run a small antenna up to the top. Um, We can also, we have another version that will be uh, mobile as well. Oh, fantastic. Mm. So can anybody buy it? Is it restricted to like only the government can have it? I'm sure the government's interested in this, right? The government is quite interested. We've been working with um, Homeland Security and other agencies. We've been in some of their evaluations at Quantico and uh, New Orleans. Um, There is a restriction called ITARS that doesn't apply to us. That's uh, I've learned so much. Mm-hmm. International trafficking and arms regulations or something like that. But I went through the process and, um, you know, being a legal system that's not restricted is turning out to be a huge advantage. Wow, that's great. Neat. So I could go buy one. Like if there's a drone buzzing my neighborhood and he's driving me crazy, I could buy it and pinpoint the guy. And then, well, you'll need to buy, if you want to pinpoint him, you'll need to buy um at least probably three of them because we triangulate because you can't open up that signal and read 
the GPS coordinates without violating the wiretapping laws. Mm. So we're like a cell signal. We, We triangulate and... Will it also identify dogs wearing uh, super soakers <laughs> and their um, <coughs> and their pilots? Well, if they have yeah, an, R- uh, an RF collar oh, on, yes, absolutely. Tr- <laughs> Watch trouble out. ahead. Yeah, trouble ahead. Actually, wouldn't we that would. be ironic? It would. If, 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 if one of your and then you're shot down. If it's, one it's, of your guests <laughs> locked up another of your guests, it would identify you. I think it's the remote control. It's, yes, oh, we would. Right. <laughs> well, I come in peace. I come in peace. <laughs> so, Linda, are people using this now? Yes, we are installed um, in uh, two prisons, one in, in the southeast, one in the west, and we're getting ready to install in two more prisons. That's to deter drones coming into the yard and with the contraband? They're, the um, Amazon, I think, could learn from some of the inmates. They're they're having regularly scheduled deliveries yeah. of drugs yeah. and cigarettes, yeah. and yeah. the the biggest fear is weapons and cell of phones. Of course. Oh wow. 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 What a world we're living in. Yeah. I would have never even thought of yeah. that. You know. I yeah. didn't know going to uh, men's prison was on my bucket list, but I've checked it off. Wow. wow. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's very, very exciting. I'm very impressed. So, Thank Linda, you. we're getting down to the uh, to the to the last minute here, Linda. Uh, how can people find you? Find out more about your your product mm-hmm. and contact you if they have any mm-hmm. follow up. Sure. Um, probably the best way to get a hold of us is on our website, which is Aero Defense A E R O D E F E N S E dot T E C H. AeroDefense.tech. Oh, that's a good one. I hadn't heard that extension yeah. before. Yeah, well, and actually, that's great for entrepreneurs. They're, I got a T-shirt from the Startup League, and they, they do things to help um, entrepreneurs as well. So I recommend them also. Well, wow, th- great. That's, that's great. Thank you very much for coming. You're listening to Passage to Profit, 710 AM, WOR. We'll be right back with our third and final pitch. There's never been a better time to start your own business. The opportunities are infinite and only limited by your imagination and enthusiasm. At Gearheart Law, we believe the most successful companies all have one thing in common. They start with a solid foundation first. Gearheart Law has years of experience protecting entrepreneurs, ideas, and brands using patent, trademark, and copyright protection. So if you have a new consumer product, a new software application that you're planning to build or sell, or a brand or company name that you want to protect, contact the experts at www.gearheartlaw.com. Our professionals will create a custom strategy designed to fit your needs and your budget. All of our attorneys are passionate about protection, licensed, and qualified to represent you before the United States Patent and Trademark Office. Don't start your project without calling us first. Visit GearHeartLaw.com. Together, we can change the world. Visit G-E-A-R-H-A-R-T-L-A-W.com. This ad has been read by a non-attorney spokesperson. Now back to Passage to Profit. Once again, Richard and Elizabeth Gearhart. Our final pitch guest is Kim Baker. She has Glamazon Beauty Cosmetics, and I'm going to let her go ahead and describe her company. Hi, everybody. So uh, my name is Kim Baker, and I'm the founder of Glamazon Beauty Cosmetics, which is a multicultural beauty brand. The world has changed in the sense that, you know, we have all type of people here in this country. We have Filipino, African-Americans, and then, of course, you know, there's all kind of mixed children today. And so I came up with this multicultural brand to be able to provide the shades for a woman from the lightest skin to the darkest skin and all in between. I am looking at you and I don't see a single line or wrinkle on your face, Kim. And I understand you have grandchildren. I do. I have three grandchildren, a 12-year-old, an 8-year-old, and a 2-year-old who's going on 40. So I think you probably know what you're talking about with skincare. (laughs) I do. I mean, I'm a lover of beauty my whole life. I've always been attracted to, you know, beauty, whether it's male, female. Um, And I am a stickler for great skin because I feel like great skin is the prelude for a great application of makeup. So what's special about your products? It's for women of all different colors, but there's also a smart technology to my foundation, meaning it oxidizes to your correct complexion. So if, if I were to put on a shade that may be a little bit off, it actually oxidizes to uh, the right color. My uh, concealers 
which are made to brighten under the eye, also have diamond dust, so it almost looks like you're glowing up under your eyes. And I simplified my Perfect Press powders where there's only four shades. So they're semi-translucent so that when they go on, they don't have to, you don't have to look through a whole bunch of colors. I'm trying to simplify my uh, brand for women because a lot of women are not savvy with cosmetics. Uh, a lot of women will buy makeup artists, I mean makeup products, and then they'll sit in their, you know, drawers. And it's because they don't know how to use it. So I kind of simplified, which I call Simplify Beauty 101, where, for instance, my Havana powder is a very light powder that you would use under your eye. And it, it works for every complexion. And then I have the another three shades, Saint Pay, Tahiti and Catalina, which are for uh, darker shades. But there's no color to it. It just, you know, gets rid of uh, shininess. This sounds like a fantastic line. It you know, really is. Yeah, I always have a hard time matching. I'm really pale, in case anybody <laughs> hasn't seen me. And I always have a real hard We've time got matching. You <laughs> We've got you covered. We now, have from the lightest to the darkest. <laughs> I understand that you are also a makeup artist and that you have put makeup on some pretty well-known people. Yes, yeah, so I am a celebrity makeup artist. And uh, that... That was what I was doing before the cosmetics line. And uh, some of my clients were like Tom Cruise, which I worked on the Mission Impossible, you know, Junket and uh, Meg Ryan, Matthew McConaughey, a lot of different people. So, yeah. Well, well, you must be good because I know I've seen men on TV. I'm like, that guy's wearing lipstick. (laughs) But I I never I never thought Tom Cruise or Matthew McConaughey was wearing makeup. Yeah. For men, we call it grooming. It's especially challenging now with the HD TV. HD TV tells no lie. Yes. Shows every pore. So, yeah. Is the market for men's makeup now not not movie stars growing? Men are starting to do a lot more with eyebrows. And everybody has eyebrows, so why not? You know, and as we all Everyone age, has two. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great market. Some but some people only have one. Yeah. Yeah. There's a few unibrows out yeah. there. But and I actually have a product that's coming out called Those Got Glam Brows. And yes, that's the name of them. And that's what it is. It it literally is hair fibers that you use to fill in your hair. And and the thing is, it's for male and female. And I plan on marketing it that way. That's going to do great. What was the the one moment in your life where you realized you can make your own product and and take it out and... So was there one eureka moment in, in your life? Well, I started out, after I left modeling, uh, I was friends with Bobby Brown from Bobby Brown Cosmetics, and I started working with her. And when I, I knew Bobby before she had her makeup line, so just seeing what she did, I wanted to be able to do the same thing with all women in mind, you know? Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. So you probably learned a lot about this during your modeling career Absolutely. and working with Bobby. Yeah. Yeah. And especially the fact that there's still a, a underserved market for women of color. I mean, you talk about most women who are women of color. We come in about 40 shades. And now that there's all these mixed marriages, it's probably even more than that. And people have like three shades for black people. I'm like, how is that possible? That's awesome. I'm sure there's a huge market for what you're doing. It is. It is. And um, right now I'm looking to, you know, launch on QVC and uh, believe it or not, probably be one of the first women of color up there selling cosmetics. Really? Really? In, in 2018. Yeah. Wow. So do you have a launch date for QVC yet? Not yet. We're working on it. I'm working on it with Lisa. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So where do you find the inspiration for your different products? Women. I love women. I mean, all complexions, all ages. Um, I'm inspired by women. I'm a woman raised by women. So, you know, everywhere I go, I see beauty. And it, and every woman is beautiful. And that's not a cliche. Every woman has something, whether it's her eyes, her lips, her skin. Every woman's beautiful. So what's the most important beauty product or thing to do like my grandma always said never go to bed with a dirty face so what what's like the most important thing in your mind well the numero uno thing that i tell people regarding beauty is be nice (laughs) that's the number one thing and then from there everything else is uh, i believe skin but i think uh personality and kindness goes a long way yeah, I have to agree with you, because if you see somebody walking down the street and they've got a skank face on, yeah. you're just like, ooh, yeah. you know? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what makeup they're wearing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and beauty starts within. Yeah. Do, you have, do you have a website? Or the Glamazon Beauty Cosmetics. 
Right. And right. and so people can order right from the website for your products? You can and- go right to the website. Uh, even if you have questions regarding, you know, your skin tone, I actually have people sending me their images and I respond personally. That's great. That's wow, great. that is amazing. You respond personally. I do, and I love it. Do you have a YouTube channel? Uh, I'm per- presently working on a YouTube channel, but okay. I, I do have some content up. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're coming to the end of our time. I think this has been fantastic. I, of course, am trying not to look my age all the time. So (laughs) I'm constantly (laughs) looking for great beauty products. Kim Baker with Glamazon Beauty Cosmetics. And looking at you, Kim, I got to buy what you're using. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you so much. Passage to profit. What are entrepreneurs' most valuable assets? Their passion and ideas. We can't protect your passion, but we can protect your ideas. Trust Gearheart Law to protect your ideas with premier patent, trademark, and copyright services. There's never been a better time to start your own business. Contact us at GearHeartLaw.com. At Gearheart Law, we have years of experience protecting entrepreneurs' ideas and brands using patent, trademark, and copyright protection. So if you have a new consumer product, a new software application that you're planning to build or sell, or a brand or company name that you want to protect, Contact the experts at Gearheart Law, www.gearheartlaw.com. Don't let the wrong protection strategy ruin your business. All of our attorneys are passionate about protection and are licensed and qualified to represent you before the United States Patent and Trademark Office. Don't start your project without calling us first. Contact Gearheart Law on the web at G-E-A-R-H-A-R-T-L-A-W.com. Together, we can change the world. This ad has been read by a non-attorney spokesperson. Passage to Profit continues with Richard and Elizabeth Gearhart. Here with Andy Bruckman. Uh, we've come to the end of our presentations this evening, and they were all great. Yes, they really were. I'm glad we had such great people on our show. Thank you, guys. And remember, everyone, to go to Passage to Profit at GearhartLaw.com and vote for your favorite project. To summarize, we had Evelyn Cucciara, The Toy Tamer, a system for making kids to want to put their toys away. Next, we had Linda Zimba, Aero Defense. And finally, we had Kim Baker, Glamazon Beauty, your next makeup line. Now Google Passage to Profit and make your choice. Remember, you can only vote once and you have until Sunday at 7 p.m. to vote. This evening's pitch contestants will receive a Passage to Profit t-shirt as soon as we print them. And the best overall vote getter of the month will receive an Amazon gift card. Before we sign off, I would really like to thank everyone who came tonight for showing up for being so professional and polished on your pitches. And I really loved hearing these pitches. I wish I could vote, but I don't think I could pick a favorite. So I don't even vote on these because I love them all. And I'd like to say I was really, really impressed with you guys. You guys show such creativity, innovation. It's wonderful. And that's what I love about being in the entrepreneurial space. I agree that pitches were wonderful. Thank you all for coming. And uh, thanks again to our guest, Andy Bruckman, creator and executive producer of the Emmy Award winning series, Monk. He has also written screenplays for the movies, including Sergeant Bilko, starring Steve Martin and Rat Race, directed by Jerry Zucker. He also wrote for Saturday Night Live and David Letterman and is recently producing the TV series The Good Cop, coming out in September. In September, third week of September. Andy, uh, what last piece of advice would you give to uh, anybody who wants to start a business and go for it big like you did? I can only speak for myself, of course. I, but, but I would say it's, it's one of the best decisions I ever made. I've, it's been so satisfying for me. You know, my creative juices are flowing. I love being uh, my own boss. I still have a day job. You know, I'm still writing for TV and film, but I can't wait for uh, those jobs to end, you know, when I take a break between between jobs I, so I can get to my own company again and call the shots and, and be my own boss and uh, and I don't regret any of it. Do you have any final words of wisdom for our listeners? Well, it's an old cliche, but I, I believe it's true. If, if you love what you do, it isn't work. And I think our three guests today are perfect examples of that. I agree. And I just want to say here, if you don't act on your idea, you'll regret not trying. I know it takes courage. It's really hard to put yourself out there. It was hard for us. But the rewards have been more than worth it. In the end, you'll be so happy you did it. Yeah, it takes a lot of time and energy, but you'll be happy. Yeah, and we started on a shoestring from ground zero, and now we have a thriving patent firm. And we get to have fun on the radio. Yeah. What a trip. For all the hard work this has taken, Richard, I wouldn't trade the journey for anything. No, it's been a great journey and so many benefits. I've had uh, more control over my life and my time and freedom, and I love what I do. 
Please, listeners, don't forget to join us next week and start thinking about what your pitch could be. This is Richard and Elizabeth Gearhart on iHeartRadio with Passage to Profit on WOR. We'll see you next week. We'll be right back. 